Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and as always I have a few announcements to start. Um, first of all, the Diet and Lifestyle Intervention course starts in just a month. It's time to get signed up and for doctors you get 39 CMEs, nurses get 39 contact hours, dietitians get 39 hours of continuing education and you get to spend two or three hours every Wednesday night live on the phone with incredible people like Dr. John McDougall and Dr. Ralph Moss and um, uh, me and Dr. Esselstyn and uh, not only the stars of the plant-based community but people who are doing innovative things in medicine in a number of different fields and you don't have to be a health professional to take the class anybody can actually take it and then the other thing um, we are starting this week our new service for members which is posting a workshop every week on the members site uh, this week we're going to be posting gardening with Gary and um, he's got created a video of just how he does his backyard garden giving you tips on how to plant things and we'll be visiting that garden via video many many times throughout the summer and I think you'll enjoy that and next week uh, will be my interview with Howard Jacobson Colin Campbell's co-author it's a pretty interesting interview and he said a lot of things I wasn't expecting so I think you'll enjoy it a lot all right so today I want to talk about hypertension and I've chosen two studies that look at this issue and um, I think that you'll understand where I'm going with this real shortly here but We'll start with a recent study of 5,000 Medicare patients shows that 85% of them were taking blood pressure medication, 85%. Most took two or three and some took even more. The reason is that doctors over-medicate seniors, we know that, and they've been trained to medicate anybody who has high blood pressure, including the population we refer to as high normal. Um, and that's in spite of the fact that there's not much evidence that supports this practice and a great deal of evidence that says it's dangerous. The drugs are not safe, they have serious side effects, and they really should be reserved for a small percentage of the hypertensive population, only that's not the way they're prescribed. So here's how this was done. A team of researchers followed almost 5,000 Medicaid, Medicaid patients with hypertension for up to three years. And what they were looking for is let's look at the risks and benefits for medicating them. Those who were taking medication had a significantly higher risk of experiencing serious, serious falls uh, that involved events like fractures, brain injury, or joint dislocation when compared to the group that was not medicated. According to researcher Dr. Mary Tinetti, and this is a direct quote, she says, the outcomes are just as serious as the strokes and heart attacks for which we give these medications. Serious fall injuries are likely to lead to death or lasting functional disability. So we just need to be more careful when we determine who we're going to medicate. So the patients were divided into groups according to how much medication they took. Only 14.1% of the group took no medication. 54.6% were in the moderate medication group, taking more than one med, and 31.3% in the high intensity medication group. Those in the moderate, moderate intensity group were 40% more likely to have serious injuries resulting from falls than those who weren't taking any drugs at all. High intensity users were 28% more likely to have serious falls. And part of the difference was a lot of those people were bedridden, so they weren't falling, they weren't walking around. And the risk doubled for those who had had a serious injury resulting from a fall a year ago. Now, the reason for all this is that drugs for hypertension cause people to be tired and confused, and they can cause dizziness when people stand up. Medical authorities have already lowered treatment guidelines for hypertension, stating that patients over the, six, over the age of 60 who don't have risk factors for diabetes or kidney disease should aim for blood pressure of 150 over 90. But drugs for hypertension cause more harm than good when prescribed to patients in the high normal category. Uh, in fact, in, in uh, the British Hypertension Society recommends that people should only be medicated when their blood pressure reaches 160 over 100 and doesn't respond to weight loss or dietary changes or diet and lifestyle intervention. Now the problem is that if we really followed the evidence and, and didn't medicate these people, sales of these drugs would plummet in the United States and all over the world actually. And both drug companies and their sales reps, the prescribing doctors, are not about to let that happen. So that means patients have to learn to say no to the men's. Now this is difficult in an elderly population because many of these people grew up thinking the doctors really did know best and they're often reluctant to challenge them. Now the researchers in this study asked 123 of the patients what they thought was more important. Was it more important to reduce the risk of cardiovascular events with the drugs or to avoid the falls? The responses were equally divided, but 
here's the problem. The option of, 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 of um, approaching or reducing the risk of both with dietary change and, and exercise was not presented. In other words, they were given the choice of having a cardiovascular event or falling. They weren't told that you could avoid both of those if you were to just adopt a program of dietary excellence and exercise. So I consider the results of those interviews fairly meaningless. Unfortunately, blood pressure meds are not the only category of medication that is overprescribed to seniors. The elderly are incredibly vulnerable, particularly in nursing homes and assisted living facilities. And as I mentioned, the problem is not limited to the United States. I was shocked in Peter Gotchi's book, Deadly Medicines and Organized Crime, when he talked about how over-medicated uh, patients are in Swedish nursing homes. And in one study where they took those patients off of the multiple drugs they were taking, immediate improvement was noticed in many things, including cognitive function. So uh, this practice is awful. It compromises the quality of life of seniors and can even result in premature death. It's appalling, but it's true. Now, here is a better alternative. Let's address the issue of hypertension a little bit different way here. A new study conducted in Japan shows that a vegetarian diet reduces blood pressure. Not surprising. The problem is, why aren't we doing that with the Medicaid population? The lead author, Dr. Yoko Yokoyama, stated that, and this is a quote, these findings establish the value of non-pharmacologic means for reducing blood pressure. Unlike drugs, there's no cost to a diet adjustment of this type, and all of the side effects of a plant-based diet are, are desirable. Weight loss, lower cholesterol, better blood sugar control, among others. I encourage physicians to prescribe plant-based diets as a matter of routine and to rely on medications when diet does not do the job. Well, maybe the broccoli producers and the Brussels sprouts producers in the country need to start taking doctors to lunch and taking them out for golf trips, and that would make them prescribe the uh, plant-based diet. But in any case, I digress here. Over our 250 studies were reviewed for this meta-analysis, which looked at the relationship between vegetarian diets and cardiovascular disease risk factors. Drops in both systolic and diastolic blood pressure were significantly greater for those eating a vegetarian diet than those who ate a more omnivorous diet. Yokoyama said that the findings were strikingly consistent and that, another quote here, a vegetarian diet is clearly associated with lower blood pressure, or put another way, a meat-based diet is associated with higher blood pressure. She added that improvements are rapid after changing to the diet due to its high potassium content and also the fact that people take in such lower amounts of saturated fat. Additionally, very vegetarian diets result in weight loss and that's a factor for improving blood pressure. Now, why is this so important? First of all, because it works. It doesn't harm anybody. As she says, the side effects are weight loss, improved numbers in other areas, uh, improved biomarkers. But when we take into consideration the dangers of prescribing hypertension medication, we really should be taking this diet thing a whole lot more seriously. And as I mentioned before, if everybody did this, we'd dry up the demand for these drugs. Bad for the drug companies, bad for prescribing doctors, real good for the health of Americans and people all over the world. So. Um, if you are taking hypertensive medication, I want to just insert one very important uh, caveat here. Don't just stop taking it. You need to work with a medical doctor to dose you down off of those drugs as you convert to a more health-promoting diet. But if you are hypertensive, I would give some real serious consideration to changing your life and addressing your medication issues with your prescribing physician. All right, that's all for today, and I will be back to you again on Thursday. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. Have a great day.